fish sim add-on gives you an easy way to animate a fish that's rigged with Rigify. If you haven't seen the first tutorial video that I did, I suggest you watch that first because it provides a general overview of the add-on. This quick update covers the new features introduced in version 0.2, which I like to call the goldfish version. This version adds the ability for the fish to hover using their pectoral fins and the air bladder. Of course, that's something pretty much all aquarium and reef fish can do, so it's not just for goldfish. The hover behavior can be disabled if you need to go back to just the shark-like swimming behavior of the first version. Uh, so you can still use version 0.2 to do shark animation. To support the more complicated pectoral fin action, I've added a new goldfish meta rig to the add armature menu. The rigify add-on must be enabled to make this menu option enabled. And the new meta rig, well, it's identical to the shark meta rig supplied with rigify, except the shark's pectoral fins have been moved to a rear fin position and new, more flexible pectoral fins have been added. You can still use the shark rig with fish sim, uh, the shark rig from Rigify, but the hover feature will be disabled if you do. The meta rig can then be converted to a full Rigify rig in the usual way by selecting the Generate Rig button in the armature panel. Okay, so let's demonstrate the action of this add-on. What I'm going to do, I've made a goldfish model to help demonstrate, and I'll just append that model in. I'll just go to the blend file and go to the group section, and I'm going to load in, uh, I'm going to append from library the goldfish group. There we go, it's a goldfish. It has a few problems with the model, but it'll do for our purposes, I think. Uh, this is what it looks like in render mode. You can see it is in fact based on the goldfish armature, uh, which has these additional controls uh, on the pectoral fin so that we get a, a nicer looking simulation. So we just have to make sure that we have the fish the fish sim add-on installed and selected and make sure it is the new version 0.2 which it is and then like before we can select the rig and there should be a fish sim panel on the left hand side with start frame end frame and we can add a target that gives us a target for the fish to swim to and we can animate, or in this case, just move the target a little bit, select the rig and press simulate. The fish action is simulated, keyframes are made for all the appropriate bones, and you can see, unlike the shark simulation, uh, the, the, the fish just starts hovering using the pectoral fins and its air bladder. We can play back that animation from the keyframes, and there it is uh, in proper real time and you can see that hovering action. What I'll do is I'll just add slightly more interest to that target. We'll just, um, let's just rotate it a little and insert a constant keyframe. And then halfway through the simulation, we'll just grab it and move it, rotate it, and maybe even move it upwards a little bit and insert a keyframe. So now when we simulate again, our little goldfish will swim to the target. The target moves, goes back to swimming mode. When it gets close to the target again, goes back to hover mode. So you can see swims close to the target, starts hovering to maintain uh, position with the target. And then when the target moves, goes back to swimming mode, turns, swims towards the target, uh, swims upwards a little bit and then goes back into hovering mode and aligns his direction with the um, with the target. That's the way that's basically the new feature of this version 0.2 of fish sim. Now because we've used the goldfish meta rig uh, we get we, we still have our main simulation properties, which were there on the first version of Fish Sim, and they really haven't changed at all. 
but now we get an additional pectoral fin properties panel where we get a whole new set of numbers to play around with. If you built your model on the Rigify Shark Rig, the pectoral fin properties panel just isn't visible. It's not there. So what do we get with these extra properties? Well, you can read the documentation on the GitHub site. It goes through each one uh, in turn, but I'll just point out a few um, significant ones. There's a panel here for hover mode parameters. And this controls that change from swimming action to hovering action and then back to swimming again. So the most important one is the hover distance. That's 0.5 of the length of the target object. And that's the trigger for going into hover mode. So when the fish swims and reaches a distance of half the length of the target, it will begin to change into hover mode and the transition time at the moment is 0.5 of a second that's how long it takes to move from swimming to hovering and when the target moved again it will take 0.2 of a second to change back into swim transition time i think perhaps the larger the fish the slower the slower the time to move from swimming to hovering that makes sense and also the slower the time to move to swimming. I think generally fish are lazier when it comes to moving to hover mode they don't switch they don't change their mode so quickly but often when there's something new takes their interest they'll go back to the swimming mode almost instantaneously. Large fish make them slower small fish make them smaller I guess would be the answer. Um, there's a few other parameters here that, um, that control other aspects of the hover. Now, uh, I should have said too, if you make the hover distance zero, I might just simulate that, then it won't go into hover mode. And so this is the way that you can uh, basically go back to that original shark simulation mode, uh, even though you're using a goldfish rig for the um, for the fish. Let's put that back. Now there's a little section here for variation tuning. So when it's in hover mode, um, you can see, oops, I've, of course I've gotten rid of hover mode with that previous example. So let's just look again. When it's in hover mode, you can see the pectoral fins flap away, then they go back to rest mode, flap away, go back to rest mode. That's controlled with this um, peck duration and peck duty cycle. So it'll swim with the pectoral fins for 50 frames. And then at the moment, it's spending 80% of its time flapping its pectoral fins and 20% of the time resting. So you can use those two parameters if you, if you have a 100% duty cycle um, oh, sorry, it's the amount of rest time compared to active time. So if you put that to zero, uh, basically the fins will flap all the time. If you put it to one, the fins won't move at all. It won't uh, flap backwards and forwards at all. Also, um, when fish are hovering, it seems like they, they occasionally just move their spine to look one way or the other way. And this hover twitch tries to perform that, a that action. So you can specify how big that twitching action is, and you can specify the average time between those twitches. And the actual values are randomized, and it just gives the fish a bit of a motion in hover mode, instead of just staring straight ahead and, um, and aligning with the target. There's one little parameter here too, I've seen from YouTube videos that some fish alternate their pectoral fins and some fish move them together so up till now it's been moving one fin forward and the other fin back at the same time uh, with that sync option uh, what happens is both fins will move forward together and the fins will move back together just depending on your on your taste i mean you're often seeing it from one side so you can't always see which action it is but that's that controls that um, that function now most of the others are similar to the parameters in the main properties section they control the main peck parameters control 
how energetically or how strongly the fish in hover mode will align with the target and the fin tuning controls the um, the details of the pectoral fin action so for example a pec fin stiffness of one will stop that um, will stop that floppy motion that you see as the fins move backwards and forwards uh, stiffness of 0.4 uh, gives what you can see there a certain amount of tip movement and you can make them less floppy than that. So that's the main features of the goldfish rig. There's just a few things I forgot to mention in the first tutorial that are probably important. The, the Firstly we do have presets so you, you, I'm, I'm sure you're probably familiar with this idea that that the, um, that the add-on will come with a few presets already, but you can just hit the plus button and make, make your own preset that just uh, will remember all of the parameters there so that you can set them up as you want and then get back to them anytime you want. I also ended up making these parameters attached to the scene part of Blender. Uh, and what that means is when you change one of these parameters and then save the blend file that parameter will still be the same when you load the blend file again. That's what I found to be the most useful but it can be a little disturbing when you want them to go back to their default setting. They basically won't go back to their default setting unless you call up a brand new blender file or unless you select um, the original one was the goldfish preset. So it's both a good thing and a occasionally slightly confusing thing. It also means that if you're simulating two different types of fish with different actions, you have to remember to save the preset of the fish you've just set up. Uh, and then when you change to a different style of fish, you have to remember to go to the preset that suits that uh, style of fish. Uh, that can be a bit tricky, but it, it's like there's no there's no completely wonderful solution for this. You, um, if most add-ins, these parameters are just alive while ever the while ever the function's running, and that's also very inconvenient. You know, when you can easily lose your settings without even um, without even realizing you're going to. Um, just a few things about the model too, for what it's worth. Um, there's a certain amount of flowiness is that a word for the tail action uh, where you can set the stiffness to be low you can see the tips of the tails wobble backwards and forwards uh, nothing stops you though from having a cloth simulation added so this model in fact I did make a if I just go back to solid mode and weight paint mode and just check the vertex groups I I did for that original bit of video make a cloth weight setting and I added a cloth simulator, uh, cloth simulation to the model as well. So nothing stops you from, from just adding a bit of extra uh, dynamic simulation to the model that responds to the movement of the armature. That seems to work fine. Also, I've added a hide group uh, I do find, I've found this on previously too, that you can have trouble with very thin sections of models like the fins. And what can happen easily is with or without the cloth simulation, the inside layer or the inside skin of the tail can sort of pop through the outside skin so that you get a sort of a shadowed area as the inside uh, goes Go, uh, as basically the fin goes inside out briefly in different areas. Uh, the solution I have for that uh, is to is to just mark the inside of the fin as a hide vertex group and add a mask modifier which basically makes that invisible. So in effect although the model is a manifold model it doesn't have any you know it, it has an inside and an outside everywhere Adding this mask will just make the tail effectively a single skin so that it um, so that it doesn't play up and I find that works quite well. 
So I think we've come to the end. That's the new features that have been added to the fish sim, fish sim add-on. I hope you enjoy simulating fish. I'll catch you later.